Yo, what's up guys? What it do and how are you doing? And good afternoon. Konnichiwa and kabawa. Gigadasika minasa in Ohio. Go inside mas. Hachime mashite. Welcome back into another reaction video. It's your boy, Money Adventure, the multitasker, the one and only, or just call me Mr. M.A. or Money Son at your service. What's happening guys? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Better, better than I was this past weekend. And sadly, the dad, this is the final day of March 31st. But also, happy Easter to every single one of you out there. And that uh, hopefully that you are relaxing and uh, getting the word from the Lord himself at the same time. Just uh, spending time with your folks and family and friends. And that, uh, which is also that that is going to be the, the final day for March Madness and that uh, this coming month of April will be not only of the final four, but also WrestleMania. That's right. And speaking of which, uh, I do have a clip in which this is a request from Storm Shadow, which I haven't talked to him in a long time. But uh, let's just say that uh, with, with the fact that, that the TNA wrestling is back in full force and that, um, yeah, I don't think it's that we are not going to see uh, that, that uh, Impact Wrestling is going to come back ever again. But here is something that is from Cult Holic Wrestling, and that this was uh, two years ago. That was back in uh, 2021. And that uh, here is a list of 10 WWE stars that TNA failed to sign, and that uh, with the with the potential of each of those superstars, that uh, would have that very likeable like uh, like that they would be coming to of the of the company and that uh it just lay to rest and that uh let's just see exactly who who actually did have that um the potential that would be coming to well well like i said that that, that it didn't that didn't happen and that failed to so let's take a look at this and let's begin and uh, if you're new to this channel and if you like what you see so far just be sure to leave a likes and also leave a comments down below but also have your notifications turned on for every new video so that's going to be posted on this channel from your short your friendly neighborhood reactor man, the soul of a Japanese brother man, the king of metal slash J metal reactor is what I do. And uh, don't forget to uh, flick that tiny little bell and that way you will be subscribed. And now without further ado, it's time to react. Let's go. Before AEW came along, the main alternative for one-time WWE wrestlers in a post-ECW and WCW world was TNA. Yep. Though the promotion was rarely what you would call stable, it was always a place for established stars to ply their trade and many made the jump over the years. Many, but not all, because try as Dixie Carter and co might, there were just some talents who they oh. wanted but just couldn't have. Right. Some of them came yeah. close but eventually decided against life in the Impact Zone. I'm Adam Pachiti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 WWE stars TNA failed to sign. Join us. Number 10, Please subscribe. Edge. Outside of a couple early day enhancement matches for WCW, Edge has basically been a WWE lifer. After making their names on the indies, he and best friend Christian were signed by WWE in the late 90s, grinded their way through Dory Funk Jr.'s training camp before being brought to television, ultimately becoming two of the breakout stars of the Attitude Era. Captain Charisma eventually left WWE for TNA in 2005, frustrated with his lack of main event opportunities, while Edge I do remember and became that, the that it, it was WWE a letdown. Champion. A few years later, however, the ultimate opportunist did consider an opportunity with WWE's then closest competition. Edge revealed during a 2017 podcast appearance that his contract was coming up in either 2008 or 2009, and somebody from the Orlando outfit reached out to him to discuss money and schedule. The idea of working less dates for decent pay was appealing to the Canadian, whose beaten up body was very much feeling the effects of a taxing career. He was also attracted by the possibility of working with fresh opponents and meeting back up with Christian, but in the end turned it down as WWE felt like home. Number 9, I Shelton see. Benjamin. 
There was a time when he was getting big victories over Triple H in the main event of Raw before having a long reign with the Intercontinental title that it looked as though Shelton Benjamin would break through and become a top-tier WWE superstar. It never quite happened though, as the gold standard had a damn good run, winning the IC, US and Tag Team titles, but never broke out into that main eventers club. When he was released in 2010, it was expected that he would be a man in high demand. And so it came to be, with the former amateur standout getting plenty of work for groups like Ring of Honor, as well as in Japan for New Japan Pro Wrestling and NOAH. People oh, likely expected well, okay. him to I, show up I in TNA, but it didn't transpire. After getting badgered with questions about it via social media, Benjamin addressed the situation on Twitter in 2015, writing that the two sides did have discussions and were eager to do business together, but that a mutually satisfactory agreement could not be reached. I can only assume that this means Shelton actually wanted to get paid on time. Number 8, Jim. Jim Ross. TNA Good didn't just JR. try to sign wrestlers who had worked for WWE. Over time, they also welcomed into the fold former WWE referees, managers, production staff, and writers in a bid to improve their products. One person they tried to bring over who would have made a huge difference is Jim Ross. Good old JR was synonymous with the WWE product, having worked backstage as the top dog in talent relations and on camera as the lead announcer of both Raw and SmackDown. His time in the company had, at times, been tumultuous, however, with a couple of high-profile firings and some televised ribbing that had to rattle. Oh. TNA made a play for him in the early 2010s, with Eric Bischoff passing on the Hall of Famer's details to Dixie Carter, who flew him to the family ranch in Texas for talks. As Ross recently explained on his podcast, he enjoyed socializing with the Carters and did consider their offer, but ultimately declined because he left the meeting unsure about his job description, company structure, and the backstage atmosphere he would be walking into. Number 7, oh. Rey Mysterio. When Rey Mysterio received his WWE release in 2015, every other wrestling organization in the world was salivating at the prospect of how many replica masks they could potentially sell to impressionable <laughs> kids. In all seriousness, Mysterio is one of the best ever and was now a free agent, opening the door for many exciting possibilities. TNA slash Impact were naturally but interested I do remember and that reached he out to Ray Ray about had his moment in. In The two the sides Lucha talked and Mysterio was receptive to working some matches but didn't want to be tied down to a contract. That didn't work for TNA, who obviously wanted him locked into an exclusive deal. So the Whoa. master of the 619 did the indie and international thing instead before showing up in Lucha underground. Uh, okay. A few years later, Impact was still trying to get their man and were negotiating to bring him in for their April 2018 tapings. However, according to reports, there was a snag during the finalization of the deal when Ray's representative Conan got involved and the biggest little man was back in WWE full time uh, by the end of the year. Number 6, The that, Ultimate that Warrior. Really when it. TNA was looking to launch in the summer of 2002, Jeff Jarrett tried to get as many major stars as he could in a bid to draw interest. The likes of Sean Waltman, Scott Hall, Ken Shamrock, BG James were all on board, but Double J reached out to many more performers who had been major deals in previous eras. Such as Sid, who was prepping to make a comeback Psycho following Sid. the gruesome leg injury he suffered in a WCW ring, as well as big names like China and Randy Savage. Really? Jarrett also had a couple of conversations with the Ultimate Warrior, who hadn't been seen in the business since his disastrous run with WCW almost four years earlier. His pitch was the same one given to other talents such as Kurt Hennig and Rick Steiner. The TNA was a startup and they weren't looking for a long term commitment, at that point, simply attempting to do one show per week for six months. Warrior listened, but passed, deciding to put all of his energy into his burgeoning public speaking career. Oh boy. Number five, Paul it, Heyman. It just says warrior. According to Paul Heyman That's himself, the, the, no TNA had been trying warrior. to get him on the phone since the day he left WWE in December of 2006. Oh. The man behind ECW didn't take their calls though, wishing instead to divorce himself temporarily from the wrestling business in order to focus on other endeavors. With the help of Spike TV, TNA finally managed to speak with Heyman in 2010. They were interested in bringing him in to help with the booking and creative direction of the company. 
Heyman was also interested in getting back into the Graps game, but as he revealed in later interviews, had some demands before he would sign up. According to him, he wanted complete control of the brand's direction, as well as a stake in the company and the ability to, should the time come, take the company public. Ooh. The Carter family was ready and willing to acquiesce, but balked at Heyman's proposal to make TNA a more youth-oriented promotion and get rid of everyone on the roster over the age of 40. With the likes of Sting, Kurt Angle, whoa, Hulk Hogan, whoa, whoa, Ric Flair, whoa, and other influential figures on the roster at the time, Dixie wasn't prepared to sanction that, and the two sides went their separate ways. Whoa. Number four. Okay, wow. So, so Paul wanted to, to wanted to take over TNA. The only catch is that uh, he he wants to remove all the uh, all the wrestlers that are in the age of forty. Wow, that is that that is that that is, that is uh, some major some uh, little cut uh, setbacks or uh, having a little cutbacks there. That is rough as hell, and that is just straight dirty. He prefers to wanted to have uh, the, some uh, young and fresh wrestlers that that could that's gonna the, that's gonna spice it up. I I that makes sense. Ryback. Oh, you know, shit. you forget that Ryback was, at one point, quite the big deal. These days, he's a walking joke, more likely to be mocked online for something dumb he said uh, rather but, than but, anything but positive he's done in the ring, it. but he really did catch on back in 2012 and had a hell of a run in WWE. Ryback, or Rizbiz as I like to call him, eventually got tired of the WWE grind and the backstage politics and the bad writing and the injuries and, well, he just got tired of WWE alright and decided yeah. he needed to get out. The gut reaction from many sections of the fan base was that the big guy could be a big fish in a smaller pond, with TNA slash Impact being the natural destination in their minds. Post WWE, however, Ryback hasn't really done much wrestling at all, working a handful nope. of indies but otherwise choosing to focus he on his other business ventures. TNA slash Impact were interested though, with Ryback stating that they did make an offer to him, but he had no interest with everything else that was going on at the time. Sadly, it looks as though an Impact run will never happen now, as Ryback is officially retired. Yeah. Number three, CM Punk. This is unfortunate. Oh, easy, you silly boy. Punk actually was signed to TNA, so you are wrong, you big stupid idiot. Blah, 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 I hear you say. Look, obviously I know that Punk worked for TNA during their early years before he decided to choose Ring of Honor over them when TNA issued an Us or Them edict in 2004. One of the ones that got away, the straight edge superstar went on to become a massive star in WWE before sensationally walking out and quitting in early 2014. Yep. Fancying their chances over a decade on from Punk saying Mr. goodbye Pipe to them, on. TNA made a play for his services in late 2014. According to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, the deal sent via an intermediary was almost Hogan-esque, which presumably means they offered Punk a boatload of cash and promised they would bring his daughter Brooke in somewhere down the line. As it became obvious in the years after the second City Saints WWE walkout, Punk was definitely not in the place to consider a return to the business at that point and didn't put a pen to paper. Something tells me ice cream bars weren't in the TNA budget. Number two, Chris Jericho. Though Chris Jericho what? has been loyal to and had a strong relationship with Vince McMahon for over 20 years, he has also shown in recent times that he's not afraid to move on and work for someone else when necessary. He's shown up in New Japan and now flies the AEW flag, but things might have been different and he could have been singing the praises of Dixie Carter instead. When Jericho left WWE in the summer of 2005, TNA were rapidly gaining momentum and was soon able to attract plenty of big time stars. With Y2J no longer tied to a WWE contract, publicly praising up and comers like Samoa Joe and AJ Styles, and yep. living on the doorstep of TNA's home base of Universal Studios in Orlando, it was a no brainer that TNA would attempt to bring him in. Fuel was added to the fire when TNA licensed a Fozzy song to use on a promotional video and Jericho put a TNA logo on his website, the sexy troll. Though Jericho met Dixie and Jeff Jarrett for lunch in Tampa, he knew in his heart and mind that he would always go back to WWE and politely turn down their offer. Jericho, ever the savvy businessman, then helped leak details of the lunch in order to get a better offer from Vince. 
Number one, Goldberg. When TNA what? were on the rise and trying their best to get as close to WWE as possible, a prevailing theory was that they just needed that one major mainstream star to take them to the next level. The idea being that if a Steve Austin or Brock Lesnar showed up in the Impact Zone, that the fans would flock and the money would roll in. They could never afford either of those, of course, but they did try <laughs> their luck with Goldberg several times over the years. They first really? pitched him in 2005 as they were about to start on Spike TV, with rumours a year later claiming that Big Billy was on his way in for a feud with Samoa Joe. There was mutual interest there, but they couldn't agree on terms, and talks quietened down for a few years. Then, during the Hogan Bischoff era, they tried again, but Goldberg turned them down once more because he viewed the promotion as a minor league and didn't want to tarnish his legacy. Ooh. Bill, I've got some bad news for you, mate. Wow. Anyway, one final push came in 2015, but also fell on deaf ears, and Goldberg was back in WWE not too long after, yeah. where he's managed to perfectly preserve his legacy. Okay, well, that explains a lot about why Goldberg came back to WWE once more. And as many offers from TNA that, that, that wanted to that, that come into the, the, to the company, and yet that, that, that's something that he doesn't want to have his, uh, his legacy to be as in, quote, minor league, quote, I, I was wondering about that. And, 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 I, and surprisingly, I... I I guess that he, I guess he, he barely talks about TNA, and you know, Ryback. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, I, he. I mean, he's he's a big dude. I will I I will give him that. It's just that the, you know, such a potential that that is it, just really wasted, and that it, it's just so much of uh, making a comeback, and that it it, it never happens, and. I guess it's that uh, he made of a, you know, making of a poll of uh, letting, letting his fans decide of his faith that if he should just come back into the WWE or retires. And I think that, that he accidentally, without even realizing that, he just nailed it of his own coffin. And that's... Um, yeah, that's, 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 that's irony, to, to say the least of it. Now, Rey Mysterio, now I will say that I was surprised that he was just that close to be just to, about to be signed in for T TNA, but Cannon that that step in to be like, hey, 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 Ray, it's not worth it. I, I think it's not gonna work. And maybe that was the, the consider that that was the the, the the smart move, and that the, which is now that currently that, that Ray is the WWE Hall of Fame and still going to be competing, and which is that the, that he will be in WrestleMania, and I think it's going to be either uh, day uh, I'm sorry night one or night two, but now um, Chris Jericho now. I still respect the man, and as I, I know, and, and the fact that, that he does have a you know a passion with the with WWE, and he who will not say his name that I will not mention, so it's better that that way. And that uh, leaving the company, and that was a a bitter taste of sweet out of, out of his mouth, and which is that now he is. Uh, currently on AEW, and as much as that, uh, the you know the the offer and making more money, and this just, I guess, is that it, it goes to show that that uh, attempting of a, a sweet offer, but I guess that that uh, it, it depends on you know with the with the time and the scheduling and mostly getting paid, and it it can be a little tired, you know tax them or that's going to be very difficult to try to keep up with everything and I guess it's probably that uh it's best that it's sometimes when it's when offer is that uh is such a big deal of it sometimes it's just it's just it's, just, it's not worth it so it that is unfortunate but other than that I mean, we, we have Ashley or Ash by Elegance, formerly known as Dana Brooke, is, is on uh, TNA. 
and obviously that she's just she's doing fine and that the sticking to having of a heel turn being of a uh a Merlin Mon- Monroe wanna be wanna wanna look alike of that of uh the gimmick is uh very interesting to say the least of it but I guess that's just show business in the world of wrestling but if you guys enjoy that and if you have like a different uh, of, of agreement of uh, of these choices or if you have something of a uh, you know more uh, more discussion with uh, uh, each wrestlers like Ryback or Shelton Benjamin uh, just you know just leave a comments down below and uh, be sure to uh, Leave a like to of um, uh, Cultaholic Wrestling and that uh, give support. And if you want to see more uh, of it uh, of their content, just be sure to uh, leave a like and that you won't miss out of a single video from them. And uh, have your notifications turned on as well. And I'll catch y'all in the next video. So take care, guys, and peace.